What's up guys, my name is Ace, and yesterday Treyarch finally revealed a little bit more info on contracts that are coming to Black Ops 4 at the end of June, so we're still a couple weeks away from that. But they did talk a little bit about these contracts as well as somewhat address our complaints about the new weapons and how they've been added into reserves and there's no direct method of earning them currently. So today we're going to be going over all of those details and I'm going to be sharing my thoughts as to whether or not I feel this is enough to save Black Ops 4. So first up, in their blog post, which I will leave linked down below if you guys want to check out the full blog post, because there's a few other things they mentioned, but we're just going to be focusing on the weapons in reserves as well as the contracts here. They said, going forward, we're actively planning to provide all players with new ways to earn weapons just by playing the game in any mode, including our community challenge that will unlock the free customizable grav assault rifles, so we already knew about that. And generally, I don't think there are really any complaints about locking the grav behind a community challenge because we're essentially guaranteed to get it. Even if technically the community didn't reach that goal, they would give it to us anyways. It's really just designed to give us the illusion that we have any say in what goes on with that. The next thing they mention is their upcoming contract system, which we'll talk about in a little bit in more detail. After that, they said there will be a new path to earning more reserves in all modes, including zombies, multiplayer, blackout, and league play. And finally, they said additional earnable duplicate protected weapon bribes that will become available in the future. So let's back it up to the contracts, and in this blog post they also shared this image right here, which is our first look at what the contracts will likely look like, keeping in mind this is like an early concept image. Things might change a little bit, but it looks like this is pretty much what we can expect when the contracts drop. And you can see here we've got what appears to be three daily contracts. And one of those is the Domination Challenger, which requires you to win 10 Domination games, and the reward for that is 1000 XP and one Reserve Crate. Then we've got the Pistol EKIA, which requires you to get 40 EKIAs with a pistol. And with that, that just rewards you with 1000 XP. And then finally, we have the Hard Challenge, and this is the Popcorn Party Challenge, which requires you to kill two or more enemies with a single grenade. And with this one, you get 2500 XP and two reserve crates. Now, presumably, based on the blog post, there will also be daily challenges for zombies and possibly Blackout as well, which I think is great. The more you encourage people to branch out and try the other modes, I think the better, as long as the challenges are reasonable and give a decent reward. But speaking of rewards, I did want to talk about the rewards that they're displaying here. Now, the these aren't necessarily confirmed to be the actual rewards we will get once these drop, and I really hope these aren't the rewards. Because first up, it looks like XP is kind of a common reward with all of these, and we are, what, nine months into the game's life cycle? We are so late in the game's life cycle, I don't think many people are too concerned about XP at this point. Most of the really serious players that do bother to Prestige are already Master Prestige. Maybe not Master Prestige 1000, but they're at least Master Prestige, and I'm at the point where I don't care about any sort of levels. Yeah, I'm sure for some people that are still grinding through the Prestiges, the, this little XP bonus will be nice, but I just think it's a strange sort of a reward for this late in the game's life cycle. It just doesn't make much sense to me. I really don't care whatsoever about that XP. So that just leaves us with the one reserve crate for the Domination Challenger that they shared here, which requires you to win 10 Domination games. That's not something you just complete real quickly, like no problem, you just kind of get it out of the way, like the Pistol EKAs. Those ones are pretty reasonable, you can get that done in one to probably four games, kind of depends on your skill level and the game mode that you're playing. But a lot of people could reasonably complete that in two games. When it comes to the Domination Challenger though, you have to win 10 games of Domination. And if you're a solo player especially, you're not going to be winning every single Domination game you play. So you're going to have to play probably 15 to 20 Domination games if you want to get that complete. That is several hours of gameplay for one extra reserve crate. That is not very rewarding at all. That is ridiculous that you would only get one reserve crate for that. Maybe if it was a special reserve crate that was completely duplicate protected, I could understand, but as far as we can see in this image, it's just a standard reserve crate. And that just doesn't line up with the amount of work that needs to go in to complete that challenge, or the amount of time at the very least that goes into completing that challenge. I would think that would be much more worthy of like five reserve crates, 
or at the very least three, but one just seems to be like a slap in the face for a challenge like that. As for the popcorn party one, I, I gotta say, I feel like two reserve crates for something like that is reasonable. That's something that you could complete on your very first match, or it could take you several matches, but it's something that actually changes up how you approach the gameplay. You can actively go towards that challenge, and I really like contracts like this. This is the kind of stuff I was hoping for and expecting out of the contract system, just something that kind of pushes you to mix it up a little bit and try a unique gameplay oriented challenge that isn't basically just play the game or try and win the game. So in that case, I think that's great. But overall, I gotta say the rewards that we're seeing so far here are pretty lackluster and it really doesn't help all that much. Now I'm still sort of hoping, but not holding my breath, that they'll have more long-term contracts like triple plays for instance, which will give us direct access to the new weapons and I'm talking actual direct access, not just one of those weapon bribes that you get that could very well be a Mark II weapon of a gun that you already have. I'm talking an actual contract like COD World War II had, for instance, where it's like you have to complete this challenge to get this exact weapon. If you want the Peacekeeper, here is the Peacekeeper contract, and you have to get 100 headshots with assault rifles. There's just something like that. It could be anything along those lines. That's what I'm really hoping for out of this contract system. But like I said, I'm not going to hold my breath here because my faith in Treyarch is at an all-time low. Now, going back to the blog post, they also talked about additional earnable duplicate protected weapon bribes that'll be available in the future. And with this, we really need to see more details. I'm going to guess that this is just going to be the same old triple plays that we had access to back in the Black Ops 3 days. And that might sound pretty good, however, the biggest problem here in Black Ops 4 is the weapon bribes, at least the one that we've seen so far, does not guarantee a new weapon that you don't have. There's actually a very good chance you'll just end up getting a Mark II variant of a gun that you already have, which is essentially just a reskin of the gun or a camo on the gun that also gives you extra XP while you use it, which, like I said earlier, we're nine months into the game's life cycle. I don't think there are too many people out there that are really worried about earning more XP. So we will have to wait and see how they end up bringing these weapon bribes in. Maybe they will actually listen to us and change those. But I will say it right now, if they don't change that so that you can't get Mark II's in that and you're not guaranteed a brand new weapon that you don't already have, then this isn't even close to enough from Treyarch. If these contracts, as they presented them in this blog post, launched like that with the game or maybe came like a month or two after the game launched, I think that would have been awesome. It would have been nice to have that little bit of extra XP while everybody was still really into that grind and really working hard to get up through their prestiges and everything. Plus getting those extra reserve crates wouldn't have hurt back then because weapons weren't locked in supply drops. So it wasn't a big deal to even worry about that stuff. Reserves are just a nice bonus. As it is now though, those contracts aren't even close to enough to make up for the fact that they have now locked weapons in supply drops. And I think right now, the number one thing we need is those weapon bribes absolutely need to be changed so that Mark II weapons are not available in those. Everybody should have a reasonable method of earning any new stat change weapon that's added to the game. And in the game's current state, we're so far away from that. As it is right now, we have over 1,100 unique items in the reserves. And also the reserve crates still aren't dupe protected, or at least not fully dupe protected. You only get a duplicate protection after the third duplicate, which is just ridiculous. And this means if you want to absolutely guarantee that you're going to get all of these weapons, you have to potentially earn literally thousands of reserve crates to get everything. To top that off, they're going to continue adding more and more of this filler content to keep filling up those reserves. And we've actually got a new run of a bunch of cosmetic stuff that they're going to be adding. I believe in about a week or two, they're going to be adding this and just filling those reserves up even more, which dilutes that pool, which decreases your odds, and also increases the total number of reserves required, assuming you were somebody that was trying to get every single reserve out there to guarantee that you get these new weapons. So the way I see it, for a full price game with a season pass on top of that, even after this announcement with the blog post, this is absolutely unacceptable to add these stat change weapons into the game the way that they have. I also wanted to go back to that post and just mention after going through this, they said there'll be new ways to earn new weapons just by playing the game. But really all they've done here is they're going to slightly improve our odds of winning these weapons in their slot machine that they've set out for us. We'll get a few extra reserves here or there and we'll get these weapon bribes that aren't guarantees by any means. But this doesn't give us new ways to earn weapons. This just gives us a few extra plays on their slot machine. 
So that's what we can expect to see going forward with the contracts and a few other things as they relate to the new weapons that are in the game. And that's just my opinion. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about these contracts? And also, what do you think about the other stuff that they proposed to give us some better odds at earning these new weapons? Do you think it was enough? Or do you have the same opinion as me where this isn't even scratching the surface? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time. Oh,